So we thought we'd give you a background on and a tour of our van and how we did it. We are Gay and Robert. Five years ago, we quit our jobs, sold our house and all of our possessions and began living the dream of traveling the world with only backpacks on our backs. After flying over 300,000 miles and visiting 82 countries, COVID brought us to a screeching halt. True to our fashion, we improvised and bought a brand new van and built it out in just six weeks to explore the United States until international travel opens up. So the kitchen, of course, is made out of 80-20. We have a drawer here that holds many items, but it has lockers on here so that it can't come out. Um, and uh, uh, these are all uh, hinged in here as far as the latches, which is very nice. Easy to deal with, not worried about them coming uh, open as you're driving. Um, this is bolted on to the L-Track that's running underneath. And also in the back here, there's L-Track here. So we initially put this in and then we went ahead and bought the one wheels and we were too far back this way. So we spent probably, you know, half an hour unbolting the bolts, moving this back, bolting it back right into the L-Track. And then we had room to put in the, uh, the one wheels in the back. Um, the water comes from the roof and I'll show you that later, but that's about 20 gallons of water up there. And it's just gravity fed. And this is like a pot filler on, uh, that they use in homes, but it works fantastic. Um, so this just lets the water, you know, just gravity feed out the bottom. We don't have any hot water, but we don't need it. Um, taking cold showers and what happens is the sun warms that up enough during the day that it gets halfway decent. Another day when we were down by Phoenix, it was actually warm. Our power comes from these. These, um, they do push up and down, but we just leave them down. We have USB on the bottom, which is very handy, especially with all this video equipment that we have now. But uh, this is just the power that we use for the induction cooktops. So for cook for cooking, we use two induction work uh, or um, stoves um, that uh, that work great. It, it, the three thousand watt inverter has no trouble keeping up with it. So the lighting in the kitchen, um, I installed uh, LED lights. Um, it's on a, a strip that go along this 80-20 here. So it provides a nice lighting. Um, there's uh, different colors you can change it to, even though we basically keep it white, but um, you can change the colors. So, and then the switch to turn them on and off is right here. But even better, we didn't want to have uh, switches all over and we wanted everything closer to the wall. So we installed Alexa. So Alexa, turn on living room lights. Okay. Okay. So there we have Alexa can turn on uh, the lights. Alexa, turn off living room lights. Okay. So Alexa's a little slow today, but uh, normally it's works good. But anyway, Alexa, um, controls living room lights, kitchen lights, outside lights, um, TV, uh, bathroom lights. I have a trickle charger to charge the, uh, the battery on the, the chassis. Um, mm -hmm. That's also uh, handled by Alexa. So it actually works out great. We don't have wiring running all over with little switches all over. So that... So for the refrigerator, most people will go with a 12 volt refrigerator um, and that way they don't have to invert the power. When you invert the power, you lose a percentage of it's not as quite as efficient as just running a straight 12 volts. So you use more battery power, but we didn't want to do that. Um, these are much less expensive than the 12 volt. The 12 volt might be a thousand dollars. I think this was like one hundred and twenty five dollars. Plus, we can go to Home Depot and we can pick this up. So we went ahead with that. Now that we want to have the uh, full house power on all the time anyway. So this worked out very well. Um, we just have this hooked in here. There's an extension cord running through there to power it up. It, uh, it works very, very good. So like I had said before, one thing we love is the living room feel. 
and uh, this gives us that living room feel. We love the windows and uh, and the motorhome. We had pretty good windows, but nothing like the van. Um, but one of the things we wanted to take advantage of that uh, many builds don't do. So if you have the bed in the back, that requires you to have the uh, bathroom or shower up front. And a lot of times they don't have a shower, but they'll have a bathroom. Requires you to have it here. So there generally is a wall here. We didn't want that. We wanted to use this room too which you know, is, is quite a bit. So what we did is we installed civil or uh, swivel seats that then just turn around easily on both of the chairs. So then we are able to sit here um, and we can have uh, probably five people in here comfortably with uh, the the couch and these but this makes it very nice to uh, use all this space then so one thing we added is the ability to have a table so we can to eat or work on the computer or whatever we we want so we added this here which is a lagoon and it allows us then we just push this up here and this just swivels and then we have a table which is just a temporary table it's kind of beat up and uh, we were going to replace this at some point but it gives you an idea of what we use then we're able to sit here like this uh, one can sit there and eat there or one can sit here um, whatever you know swivels around so we have uh, ability to have a table to eat or to work on the computer So this here is where we keep our clothes. Um, works out great. We don't have a lot of clothes, thankfully, but uh, it holds our clothes in there nicely. Um, also provides us a table for drinks or whatever. Behind here we have, a, um, this is a control for our diesel heater. So it's a heater that uses a diesel that this, this vehicle is also a diesel. So it uses a fuel that's in here for that. Underneath here is where the diesel heater is actually installed. So it just blows out here. Um, easily heats this. We've been in 20 degree weather, again, with no insulation, and it's had no trouble uh, keeping up. Um, this is a control for the uh, max air fan, which is great. You can have the air come in, go out. I mean, there's a lot of different features on that, which seems like a, not a big deal, but a fan in a van is uh, or uh, RV is very important. So one thing with off-roading is you like to have, uh, and sometimes you need to have the ability to um, uh, deflate your tires. So when you go into sand, you need to deflate your PSI and your tires in order to get more traction. So in order to do that, you need to bring those tires back up after you're done. So we installed um, an air compressor. It's an ARB twin compressor. It's underneath here. You won't be able to see it. Um, we have the, the cords in there. But then we just have a switch here that turns it on and that turns it on and off. And then I can go from tire to tire and bring them up. It takes about uh, three minutes a tire to go from about 30 psi to 70 psi. So that's uh, very quick as far as you don't want to have it be 10 minutes a tire, 15 minutes a tire type of thing. So this is a very nice compressor. It fits in here. A lot of times they'll put them underneath the hood, but we didn't want to do that because of the weather and such. So um, it works great here. So we want to do a lot of off-roading, which we have already. Um, but we decided we wanted to get a winch. This is a 12,500 uh, pound winch. Um, what we did was we take off the bumper, take off the bumper that came from factory and put on a different one that allows the winch to be installed into and then um, wired up the winch and put it in here. So it wasn't too bad of a job. This will then get us out of troubles potentially. Hopefully we don't need to use it, but it would be a lot of fun if we did. Um, so it'll pull us out. We have. T uh, hooks on here to um, uh, we have all kinds of uh, tow gear that we need in, uh, in order to use the winch coming off a tree and such.
So you may be asking, or, or maybe not, is how do we fill the tanks on the roof? Because there's no openings. Those are actually vertical tanks. You're supposed to mount them vertically. Um, and then there's a cap on the top, and you, you fill it up. So they're made for the inside, even though they're UV protected, they're BPA, they're, um, you know, they're, they're made for their food grade uh, uh, plastic. But, so this is how we fill them up. So we take this, we hook it into the, uh, into the shower head. From there then we run this to the spigot, which we can find water all over the place. You can find it at gas stations, uh, roadside places have it, campgrounds have it, state parks have it, many places, home, whatever. Take this, put it in, it fills it up to the top. The, the tanks are vented up there, so it allows air to escape and the water to fill in. It takes uh, very little time to fill up and we're done. If there's any water that drips out, it's dripping right into the shower pan and so no worries. So it, it works awesome. So one thing when we did this build, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. We came from the motorhome, which was not super complex, but had a lot of things that we didn't use. We didn't like propane, so now we have no propane. We use the diesel. Um, it, it works great. We don't have air conditioning. We don't need it. We won't be in places that are hot, and if we are, we'll get a hotel if it's super hot. But we have no gray water tanks underneath, no black water tanks, no fresh water tanks. So the underside is totally just like it came from the factory, which we, we love. So when we're going off-roading, there's no worries about any of that. But what we do then for the sink is we need to handle the gray water. And so underneath here, we have a gray water um, tank. So we just take this out and we can go to a public restroom. If we're a dump station at the campgrounds, we can just pull this out and uh, dump it there. So super easy. Um, so our gray water is here, our urine's here, and our waste is over there. And we have nothing underneath the van. Simple, easy, and that was the whole idea of the build. So the cost of the van, I'll give you a breakdown of what we spent on it. And you may think, oh no, it's, people do vans because they're cheap and you know it's much less expensive than going with a Class A or some big uh, motorhome. And that's not true. If you bought this brand new, you're looking at $180,000. So another thing you may ask is like, well, where do you sleep? Because normally the bed is in the back. The weight of the van is about, uh, we just went through a way station. Uh, it's not for everybody, but we fant we love it. Now, would we want to live on here full time or any van or any motorhome or any RV or any house or anything? 